Hi, my name is Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that have maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I've had a car that lasts over 400,000 miles. The current car that I'm driving has over 220,000 miles on it. It's a 95 model. So I hope you can benefit from the information I share. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm working on a, a 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis LS. Uh, I don't believe it has any kind of police package or anything, but that's it behind me. I'm going to replace the rear brake pads and the rear rotor, and then I'll probably shoot another video tomorrow doing the front brake pads and the front, ro front rotor. So let me get started. First thing I suggest you do is put something in front of the front wheel and in front of the back wheel on the opposite side of the car to stop the car from rolling while you're jacking the side that you're going to work on up. If you got a floor jack, that's great. All I have is the supplied scissor jack for the car. And as you notice, it has this pad here. And I slide that under the frame of the car and jack it up right there where it meets the frame of the car. So I'm going to jack the car up get the wheel off the ground, and then I'm going to put a jack stand under it. I'm going to fit the jack stand under the axle. Okay, before I jack the car off the ground, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hubcap, and I'm going to break the lug nuts loose. I did get... I did get the... Uh, take a little bit of weight off the wheel. Now I'm going to break the lug nuts loose. And then after I get the lug nuts loose, I'm going to jack the car the rest of the way up. Okay, I got the wheel off the ground. This car does not have any kind of automatic leveling, so I didn't have to turn that system off before I jacked it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and screw these lug nuts off and pull this tire off real quick. Alright, when you get the lug nuts off, normally I just bump the tire at the top to get it to come off. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and put that jack stand under it. Okay, what I did, I jacked the car up high enough to get the jack stand under there. Then I lowered the car down until the axle rested on the jack stand. You got to be careful you don't pinch that brake line there. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that number 10 millimeter bolt there for the caliper. I'm going to come down here, remove that number 10 bolt for the caliper. And then I'm going to come around here and uh, pry this brake pad off. The other side caliper was actually locked on. This rotor is in a lot better shape than the last one. This pad has a little bit of meat left on this side here. I don't know if it got any left on the other side. But since I got a pair of rotors, I'm going to go ahead and replace both of them. You got to take these little metal clips off here. So I lowered the car down on the jack stand I'm gonna pull those bolts work this caliper off then I'm gonna pull these clips that will allow the uh, uh, rotor to come off this is four-wheel disc brakes now there's parking brakes under this drum so you cannot set the parking brake when you do this job all right let me go ahead and pull this caliper apart okay what I normally do to get this uh, caliper loose is I get a screwdriver, a flat tip, and I pry it right in here to compress this uh, piston on the caliper a little bit. That'll loosen up the rest of the caliper so that I can pivot this down and swing this away from the, uh, from the uh, wheel assembly and the rotor. Okay, once I pried that piston a little bit loose, I came over here. And I took the screwdriver and I pried the bottom of the caliper out and it popped out and down. So now I have the uh, caliper loose from the wheel. Now this uh, brake pad, the inner brake pad, is held in the piston with some clips that I'll show you in a minute. This brake pad is held on by these side clips. So you have to take these side clips and pry them down or just work it out uh, of the thing. I'm not going to be able to do that with, your, with my hands. So I take these tabs and I force this off the, off the caliper like that. 
Okay, I got this pad, the outer pad off. As you can see, the inner pad has clips in there holding it to the caliper. I'm going to leave that on for now. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this bolt loose that has the bleed valve in it. I'm going to put something on the ground to catch a little bowl to catch a brake fluid. Then, after I break that loose just a little bit, I'm going to put this C-clamp on the caliper and I'm going to compress the caliper piston back into the caliper so that when I go to put all this stuff back on, the brake pads will have enough room to slide over the new caliper. You can't put the brake pads on with that piston extended. So, I'm going to open up the brake bleeder. I'm going to compress this. I'm going to catch the fluid in a container on the ground. And then I'm going to put the new pads on. And then I'm going to pull this uh, disc off. So it's a pretty simple task here. Okay, I got the piston pressed in. I pulled the brake pad off. Now, whenever I go to put the new brake pads off, I grease everything that I think the pads will touch with uh, brake grease. That will help prevent brake squealing from a harmonic hum against the rotors. Alrighty. Okay, when I got the new pads, they had some kind of blue coating thing on them. And it said remove that, so I had to cut around with a razor blade to get that off. So I peeled that off. I put grease around where the caliper with uh, piston would touch this. I put grease on the upper tracks and on the back side of this. But this kind of has a kind of a tacky feel to it, so I may not have needed to do that. I'm just going to put grease on the uh, caliper where the brake pads will make contact on it. And then I'm going to put it back together. I'm also put grease on those bolts that go through here, the slide pins. Okay, I pressed that little brass thing in there. Stopped the caliper from uh, the rotor from falling off. Then I pressed the brake pads inside the caliper. And the other one clips on the other side of the caliper. Now I'm going to take this down here and thread this on here. Be careful not to damage your brake lines, letting your calipers and stuff hang from them. But this thing has a tip on it, and that tip has to go under that part of the uh, caliper retainer, and then it pivots up from there. So I'm going to work that back on. These hooks slide in there, this goes in here, then the bottom of it pivots up in there. So I'm going to put that on, then I'm going to put those retainer bolts back in the caliper, the guide pin. Okay, a little help in getting this in position. Whenever you try to put this in, these uh, rubber guide pin deals here, they automatically spring load in the way. So you'll have to reach on the inside and compress them back out of the way, top and then do the bottom one the same way so that your uh, brake pad and calipers will slide over the rotor. As you can see, everything is now in place and I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that on. 10 millimeter bolt, I'm sure it has a torque value, probably 18 foot pounds. And then I'm gonna bleed the brakes. You always wanna bleed your brakes after you've opened that up or even time you do it, and this would be a good time to replace the brake fluid as well. So you can bleed the brakes, have somebody help you. Um, uh, just get all the old fluid out of there because that old fluid was kind of brown. It should be clear. That way your calipers last a long time. Then I'm going to put the wheel back on it. I raise the car up, get that jack stand out. Then lower the jack stand. I mean move the jack stand out. Then uh, snug the bolts down. Lower the car till the wheel makes contact with the ground. Put a little pressure on the wheel. Then I'm going to torque those uh, lugs down on that wheel. You always do it in a star pattern. Tighten this one. Tighten this one. Tighten this one. Tighten this one. Then tighten that one. And you probably want to torque those somewhere around 75 foot-pounds to get your wheel good and tight on there so you ain't got to worry about it coming off. Got any questions? Go ahead and post them. This may be a no-brainer to some. 
But if you look at the lug nut bolts, one side is flat and one side has a beveled tip. You always want to put that beveled tip in because that's what seats inside the uh, groove in the wheel. So put the bevel side in before you get all those lug nuts on and snug them down. All right, I got the uh, car lowered, the lug nuts tightened, the hubcap reinstalled, the jack lowered and removed. This wheel is all done. I'm going to go ahead and do the front. I'm going to video one of those as well. Thanks for tuning in. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. Go ahead and subscribe to my page so you will get notification of future videos that I post. You can feel free to visit my website, robertspano.com, post questions, and thanks again for watching.